Okay, so like I said, I've been shipping a fair amount of cans lately. Cans, let me grab one here. Da, 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 da. Cans, heavy, dense, liquid, that sort of thing. So they cost a lot to ship because of their weight and because of their density. Okay, so you've got some options in shipping, right? You've got flat rates, which are these. Da, 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 da. Flat rates, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Pretty much, I think it's like 75 pounds. Pretty much anything you can put in this box that is under like 75 pounds, you can ship. So pretty crazy for one rate, one rate. So man, I think that a medium flat rate's around $13 and change. I think a large flat rate is 18, right around 18 or so. I don't have it in front of me right now. So when you're thinking cans, you're thinking that that may be the only option you have. That is not true. I'm here to tell you. You have choices. <laughs> you have choices when you ship. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with zones, here's what zones are, okay? The United States is divided up into zones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight zones. And the farther you get away from your destination, as far the, the farther the shipping destination is away, the zones increase. So if you're in your state, and that sort of thing, or in, at least in your half of the state, that's probably a shipping zone one, okay? The farther you get out, you go more north, you go more east, west, that sort of thing, you'll increase in zones two, three, stuff like that. You start to get about three or four states away, you're probably in zone five, and then beyond that, six, seven, eight, okay? So flat rates, as far as shipping cans go, okay? Flat rates are pretty much good for zones six, seven, and eight. That's pretty much what you want to use for shipping cans. Six, seven, and eight, you want to use large or medium flat rates. Now, if it's closer than you and you're in zones like one, two, three, you actually want to use regional rate boxes. So if you're not familiar with regional rate boxes, I'm assuming you are, but let me grab one of those. Oh, camera went a little wonky on me. Oh, oh. So this is a regional rate box. You can see it says regional rate on it. Amra hates this. <laughs> Sorry, it's going crazy. This camera has auto tracking on it. So if I cover my face, it gets nuts. So I just turned the auto tracking off. Regional boxes. So you wanna use regional boxes for stuff that is zones pretty much one, two, three, maybe four. Um, and then five and six kind of turn into a little bit of a question mark. So it kind of depends where it's at in zone five and six, but they make a couple types of boxes. They make regional A and regional B. The difference between the two is A is smaller, B is bigger. So if you've got just like, you know, six cans to ship, that sort of thing, you probably want to use like a regional A. If you've got more, then you'll probably want to switch to a regional B, but regionals go up to, I think about 15 pounds. I think that's that's where they, they end. But it's a compromise between normal USPS priority and a flat rate. So in California, in the Southern part of California, if I'm gonna ship some cans out and it's it's in Southern California, I'll do a regional A, regional B. It will cost me like eight bucks to ship somebody a, a box of cans, which is crazy, right? So it will cost me like eight bucks. And and when you go out, even zone two, even zone two doesn't increase that much. It'll be like $8.60 or, or something to that effect. It doesn't go up that much. Eventually, the farther out you go, you hit you know, uh, zones that are farther away. And that's when you wanna make the switch. But in the meantime, cans, dude, regional. View is regional. So that's the way you wanna go with those. Uh, when you get farther out, start switching to flat rates, mediums, larges, stuff like that. If you use ShipStation, which is a program that I use, it actually tells you the zones right there so you don't have to figure it out. Otherwise, you're just kind of hunting and pecking and that sort of thing going, eh, I think it's pretty far away. But you could actually print out a map from the post office that kind of shows you the zones and you can go by there. You just kind of have to know your geography. And as you know, uh, people in the United States aren't real good at that. So that's zone shipping. And that's cans and stuff like that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So that's that. Oh my God. So, uh, yeah, look at that. Woo, nice. Okay, so those are all done. I worked on those earlier. The way I prep my cans is I actually put them in the whole thing in a plastic bag 
and I slipped the whole thing in the box. All right, so let me go. There I am. Come on, camera. All right, so when I do these, I'll show you kind of what I do. So when I prep these cans, I put everything in a large plastic bag. And it's bigger than the flat rates are the bag has. I can get a lot more than 12 cans in this bag, but flat rates pretty much top out at about 12 cans or so. When I do the flat rate, oh, it's a beast. Okay, so when I do the flat rate, I make sure to tape along the center and I tape on the ends too, so that way it doesn't come undone. And, oh, it's so heavy. And then like I said, I use the bag on the inside and I use this impulse sealer to seal the bag so that it's sealed. This whole thing kind of gives the, I don't wanna say the illusion, but kind of gives the customer the feeling that you are being careful in these times and stuff like that. You're sealing stuff in plastic. You know, the tape is, is is really for protection for the box. It's uh, you know it's a very heavy box once all the cans are in it, so it keeps it from you know exploding or bursting at the seams, that sort of thing. I don't think that it will, but that just kind of helps it give it a little stability. So that is how I prep the cans for outbound shipments. All right, so now that I've finished some of the shipments, I'm gonna turn the lights off and I am gonna go to the liquidation store and see if I can find anything. All right, I'm in the car. Let's go hit this. Let's do it. Here I am at the liquidation place. I'm gonna go in, check it out. My guy that normally, you know, sends me leads and stuff like that, he's not on the ball all the time. So sometimes they get a shipment in and he doesn't really tell me and forgets. And so I gotta check myself. And I'm like, dude, why didn't you tell me? Ugh. So I'm gonna go in and go check it out. But first things first, I gotta put my face masks on or face mask. I guess I don't need two. And I should have shaved, that would have created a nice tight seal, but I'm a moron, so I'm gonna put it on anyways. Uh, all right, let's do this. All right, here's my face mask. Now they're not the end uh, 94 and 95, but best I could do under the circumstances. I feel like something is better than nothing. So, that brand shiny new. I got these uh, before things went down. So I've had these for a little while. All right, let's see if they fit. Oh man, honestly, these kind of suck to wear, dude. They're like warm and hot and you kind of feel like you're suffocating. <laughs> I guess they're better than nothing, right? So uh, so yeah, I'll go ahead and wear this in. And like I said, I should have worn something a little, little I should have shaved, should have shaved. So, all right, let's do this. Something's better than nothing, right? I did it, I'm back. <laughs> I went in, I got uh, some cans of soup back here. I'm gonna try those out, I had cases of them. So, uh, Campbell's soup. So I'll go ahead and put those up. See how they sell, they should sell good, I think. And they've got a bunch more, so I'll go back and get them um, after the, the weekend, after these sell. So yeah, Monday I'll go in when there's less people and whatnot and I can kinda load up without being judged. <laughs> So I'll do that and uh, yeah, all right. So successful, like just goes to show you don't listen to your liquidation guy all the time because he does not know what you're looking for and he doesn't always know what he is getting in. So you gotta check, all right. I'm gonna head home now. I've got Instacart coming, grocery delivery. So I've got that coming a little bit later and I'm just gonna check in at, at home and see what's going on and uh, kind of take the rest of the night off, I think. some cereal at the grocery store but there is way too many people here so I'm gonna skip that all right that's my dog Fonz he's crazy what do you got what do you got what do you got there buddy what do you got let me take it happy to see me What's up, buddy? All right, so this is our new reality right now. My uh, girlfriend is a doctor at the hospital, and she is on call this week. So she is sleeping downstairs so that she potentially doesn't get me infected or anybody else. And that's her heater. 
right there. So she's on call this week, um, but basically um, she's got to do this for probably about a week and a half to two weeks afterwards, just to make sure everything is good. Uh, they've got about, uh, man, last I heard 30 or 40 patients at the hospital that have the coronavirus. So high chance. And uh, I am upstairs uh, sleeping. Uh, so that's where I'm at. And we do stuff like we spray everything like to show you. My dog's going crazy right, crazy right now because uh, he wants some food. Some else. Some food. There you go, buddy. All right, and yeah, so we got our pile of crap over here. Uh, we get the doorknobs with this guy there. So she sprays when she comes in and leaves all the doorknobs, wipes everything down. We got the hand sanitizer. We've got the propyl alcohol, we've got a spray bottle, and then we've got some masks, of course, back here. So, yeah, so that's what we do every day right now. And, um, yeah, like I said, everything gets sprayed, all the knobs, everything gets wiped down. Yeah, so when she comes home, she goes upstairs. There's a laundry basket up there that uh, she can put her clothes in, though. Now, these are, like, clean clothes, essentially. These are clothes she goes back and forth to the hospital, and she leaves, like, the scrubs and everything at the hospital. So she drops these into the basket or sometimes directly into the laundry machine. And then uh, then we got kind of clean them as we go and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, so that's going to be going on for a good two or three weeks. So we're doing that and uh, making sure that, you know, she doesn't bring anything home and and or I don't infect her or anything like that. None of us are infected. I swear to God, it's allergies. <laughs> no, uh, but, yeah, nobody's, nobody's in trouble at this point. It's all precautionary since she's going to be around, you know, a pretty decent amount of uh, patients. They're trying to do a lot of hospital um, telecom visits and that sort of thing. So um, they're trying to do that. Um, but she does need to see patients as well every once in a while here during this time period. So, yeah. All right. Good times. Now just waiting for Instacart so we can do the groceries. Then I can wipe down the groceries. <laughs> all right. I think we've got Instacart here. Oh, there it is. Dog's loving it. Hey, I wanted to correct something real quick. A day later, I realized I misspoke when I talked about how many cases of coronavirus there are at my girlfriend's hospital. It's actually right around 111 cases, but that's San Bernardino County. So that's not necessarily just her hospital, although they have a pretty decent amount of cases. So sorry about that. My mistake.